I've always loved acoustic music. I remember being a little kid, sitting around the dinner table, listening to a Prairie Home Companion on NPR. Garrison Keillor's country music was my first experience in the country scene. When I learned about Tracy Chapman becoming the first black songwriter to win Song of the Year at the Country Music Awards, it got me thinking about the industry, about the moment that we're in right now in country music, and whether or not it's more diverse than it was. I realized in order to figure that out, I needed to learn a little more about the history of country music. According to the Library of Congress, when people from Europe migrated to the United States and people from Africa were forcibly brought through the transatlantic slave trade, they ended up near the Appalachian Mountains and the Mississippi River. They brought their folk tales, songs, and musical traditions. For example, did you know the banjo, a commonly used instrument in the country scene, is actually a descendant of the West African instrument, the Akonting? During the Great Depression, rural people migrated to industrial cities like Bristol, Chicago, Nashville, and Atlanta, and brought country music with them. According to the Journal of American Folklore, the country music scene was born in a time of racial segregation in the 1920s, when industry representatives were putting together the industry two categories formed, race records and hillbilly records. Hillbilly records was the white space, while race records promoted and recorded within the black community. With this in mind, I wanted to speak to a contemporary country artist to see if this separation still exists. My name is Kandia Crazy Horace. I'm an indigenous and black singer-songwriter based in the Napa Ho King, which is New York City. My indigenous family is from Virginia, and my black family is from Southwest Georgia. Can you tell me about the influences at play in your music? So I have a real background in Southern roots music. And that has influenced what I wrote. From the beginning, I just wrote from that voice. I never aspired to do other so-called urban genres or other forms of Black music. I just was influenced by Appalachian folk. Candia is also a member of the Americana Music Association, and she hopes to perform at the 2024 Americana Music Festival. The Americana Music Association is a not-for-profit organization that aims to spread awareness on the Americana genre. It was created in 1999 in Nashville, Tennessee. Well, Americana is basically the place where artists who don't fit the mainstream country industry are gathered. And there's more artists of color, particularly black artists, that are getting recognition in the Americana space. Could you tell me how you felt about Tracy Chapman's win at the CMA Awards? That was a major, major milestone, her being the first Black woman to win that category. And I felt proud that night. But there needs to be current, actual Black country artists or Black Americana artists that are winning in these categories. The categories need to be expanded to include them. Despite Tracy Chapman's win and more artists who are black, indigenous, and people of color gaining recognition in country music, the industry is still dominated by white male artists. In 2022, the musicology researcher Dr. Jada Watson conducted research with the data journalism publication The Pudding and analyzed a 24-hour programming on 29 U.S. country radio stations. Dr. Watson discovered that back-to-back -back songs by women artists occurred only 0.5% of the time. The report stated, if you listen to these stations nonstop, you'll likely only hear three back-to-back -back songs by women, compared to 245 from men. I sat down with Dr. Jada Watson to find out why this trend is happening and if it truly reflects the country music demographic. So Dr. Watson, these statistics are so shocking. Can you tell me why this is happening? So, you know, unlike other genres, other other musical scenes, country is 
mainstream country is made on one street in Nashville. Like there's no, there's no changing that until folks from outside of that space can participate in music making. So what changes have you seen in how BIPOC artists are being recognized? Um, I see no change, none, because in 2022, by the end of that year, female artists still only held 11% of radio airplay, 0.05% was for for women of color. Um, Any change that is happening is for a handful of Black men. It's not, and, and even still, it's the same couple of men. I wanted to ask Dr. Watson what she made of Tracy Chapman's win at the CMA Awards. Tracy Chapman did just win Songwriter of the Year, um, but for a song that she could never have performed herself within this industry. Mm. You know, kudos to Luke Combs. He loved the song. He championed the song. He's been singing it for years and, and chose to record it. And that's great. But it's not lost on me that like a straight white man can sing Tracy Chapman's song, but a queer black woman can't. Let me start by saying, let's go girls. Okay. Shania Twain's song, Man, I Feel Like a Woman, continues to inspire women across the globe. Twain was recognized this year at the CMT Equal Play Awards for her vocal advocacy for elevating underrepresented voices in country music. Dr. Jada Watson herself was invited to help select the award winner. Together, let's ensure that all our fellow artists get equal play regardless of gender, age, or race. CMT really, really understood that it wasn't just about women. And so their their equal play initiative has changed. If you look at those numbers and like, you know, Jada can can show like the stats, the numbers, it's like white men, white women, way down (laughs) black men. (laughs) Breesy Palmer is a black singer songwriter whose Apple Music radio show, Color Me Country, has given a voice to country artists of color. Hey y'all, I'm Reese Palmer, host of Color Me Country Radio on Apple Music Country. And what you're about to see- But her podcast isn't the only way that Reese Palmer is helping other artists. There's an artist grant program that she initiated. BIPOC artists can write directly to her and, um, you know, pitch their project and, and get a small grant to see it through. So what have I learned about the country music industry? Well, it's a lot like other spaces in the world. We need to make room for everyone to tell their stories. It seems appropriate to leave the last word to Jada Watson and Candia Crazy Horse. Without structural change, without changing the personnel, without changing the way they do business, it's never, the industry's really never going to move beyond what it is now. Continue to diversify their membership and diversify their programs. There'll be a safe space for artists of color to keep emerging and gain more of a share in the audience. 